Hello you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Stetarguskosh, Honey Stoker. And you may well remember that at the end of last episode we left off at the beginning of a siege. And so that's why all the dwarves are down here in the meeting hall, for the time being. Because you see, well, when we left off, those goblins had just appeared over here at the west. And well, I figured I'd just help speed things along by letting them move in a bit towards our spike hall. That's how I was planning on dealing with them. And so that's what I did, they moved in, sure, and they were trying to get over here towards our back entrance. And I made a terrible discovery, because down here in our back entrance I had this gate set up that I was pretty sure I had linked up, but come to find out, I had not. Which is just horribly stupid of me. But we were able to get a wall up in time, just in time, thankfully. So that's not a big deal whatsoever. And so then the whole siege just turned right around and went down our normal entryway where we have that gate that we close up and everything's fine. Except, remember, um, I had made a little boo-boo last episode where I did not link this gate up yet, and I could have sworn I linked it up after that, but I guess I did not. <laughs> Which again is horribly, horribly foolish of me. And so now we have a whole troop of humans, goblins, dwarves, and trolls heading down towards our fortress. And now there's only this one gate left. Which is very, very bad. Um. I'm hoping this one's linked up, I'm pretty sure it is, but I was also pretty sure those past two were as well. So let's, let's see what happens here. <laughs> I'm gonna come down here and pull this lever right here. And uh, make it snappy dwarves, please, please, please. Alright, here comes a dwarf heading down, please go faster than that, please. Oh my goodness, let's go. Go ahead, go ahead, pull that lever. Alright, looking over here to the siege. <laughs> The goblins are moving right in, they're almost here. Come on, come on, pull that lever. Oh, thank God, okay. <sighs> we can breathe now. We're safe, thankfully. That, that was truly terrifying. Now here, hold up a second. All right, let's just uh, have a quick look here. Yeah, the siege is actually very, very small. Less than a full page, which is like nothing. Now I'm gonna try messing around with some of these other levers here just for a second. I'm pretty sure I set them up. I can't be that stupid, can I? All right, gonna pull this lever right here. And yes, I guess I am that stupid. Okay, noted. That is the first thing I'm going to do after this siege. Get all these gates linked up 100%. That is so stupid of me. Hmm, <laughs> speaking of stupid, have a look at these guys here heading down the other end of our trap hall. I say trap hall because you can see we actually set up some standard weapon traps at the end of the hall here. I figured we were looting so many weapons from those goblin pits that we might as well, right? And you know, they seem to be working it pretty damn well, actually. Yeah, I mean, geez, would you look at this? This is just one attack from one of those traps. Hammers, spears, picks, morning stars, scimitars, mauls. Man, oh man, these things are super deadly. They all just came spinning out, striking this human, smashing ribs, bruising muscle. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. That's pretty gruesome right there. My, my most sincere condolences. But hopefully that'll teach you. I can't imagine these guys will be coming back anytime soon. Assuming they survive, I suppose. Well, dwarves, while those goblins out there realize that they've made the worst mistake of their soon-to-end lives, I want to get you guys up into the barracks. You guys really should get more familiar with your weapons and armor before I send you out again. That last raid had the potential to be kinda ugly, and it wasn't too too bad, but still. We shouldn't be seeing losses like that. Completely unacceptable. Hmm, you know, something else a tad unacceptable is the size of our tiny, tiny barracks. Yeah, you know, in fact, I'm not even too sure how anybody's accomplishing anything in there. All the dwarves are just kind of crammed together. Hmm. We'll put some thought into that, and maybe I could figure out a better solution. It would probably be for the best. Yeah, we'll let some time pass and see if that siege moves out at some point. And until then, we'll just be training anyways. Nothing too exciting. Just a moment now, we'll be right back. All right, we are back, and we have another new artifact to boot, and this one is a good one. Arib San Rebbitur, one of the Boar Bloods, has created Kasrif, a steel shore sword. He claims it as a family heirloom. A steel shore sword. That is a fantastic artifact right there. Let's have a look. The Quiet Bell. Ooh, a heck of a name too. Ominous. It is worth 189,000 which might be our most expensive artifact, actually. Oh yeah, it's actually worth a bit more than Odam Thilseg, our steel battle axe, but not much more. Anywho, Kasrif, a steel short sword. All craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. 
It is encrusted with octagon cut red flash opals, decorated with beak dog bone, and encircled with bands of beak dog bone and cushion cut red zircons. This object is adorned with hanging rings of red flash opal and menaces with spikes of steel and beak dog bone. On the item is an image of pomegranate trees and red flash opal. Very interesting. I will admit to helping Arab a bit with choosing his materials by forbidding some less interesting things. I thought beak dog bone might be nice and those red gems as well, but he chose steel himself. He's actually quite partial to it. But anyways, this is one cool weapon, a steel short sword. We'll have to find out something to do with this because it would be a shame to just have this thing around as a decoration. Gonna take some thought. Fantastic work, Arab. A legendary artifact indeed. Anywho, back here in the fortress, and you can see the dwarves moving freely once again through the entry hall, and that is because the siege left. A great majority of those bastards were hacked apart in our trap hall, and then they fled soon after. No big deal whatsoever. And I did have the dwarves training for a bit too, just while the siege was here, and for a little bit afterwards too. But darn it, we have so much work to do here in the fortress. It's crazy, and so I figured we'd get to it. Yeah, we're still very busy at work in the Tower of Memories, which is still coming along. As usual, progress is slow, but a bit faster than it has been, which is pretty exciting. And of course, we are still working on the pump stack over this way too, which depressingly is going very slow. I was starting to feel pretty positive about the progress, but then I actually counted how much we built and how far we have left to go, and I just realized we're only at the halfway mark, which is terrible, because it's taken us quite a long time to get even this far. Now, there's a way you can build these things where if you build them from the very top of the stack down, one by one, it's supposed to be a bit quicker and help reduce lag in the game, I believe. And that's what I've been doing. But hell, I might just go for it and start building these things like crazy. That should get it going a bit faster, I believe. And I might be able to find out a way to shut it off too. And I think that once it's completed, we won't have to have magma pumping through constantly. So we won't have to worry about lag so much. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, don't worry about it. We'll get something figured out. But I think that's enough pump stackery for now. It's about time we went out on another raid, I think. Gotta keep those damn goblins on their toes. And so let's have a look here. Now, there is no goblin settlement down to the south whatsoever. Nothing. And then, of course, over to our west, there's Dark Mine with 2,000 goblins. Up to our north, there's Standard Worlds, the former dwarven capital, with 3,000 goblins. Can't touch that. Yeah, we're gonna have to look around a bit and see if we could find some smaller places. Ah, here we go. Right up here to the north, we have a goblin pit known as Hell Vice. And it looks like there are about 30 goblins here, which could be a little bit troublesome, but hell, I think we can handle it. Yeah, let's have a stab at it. See how this goes. We will raid Hell Vice, and we're going to attempt to raise the place. And of course, once again, we'll be assigning all of our squads except for the Boar Bloods. 110 fighting dwarves. All right, there we go, dwarves, you have your mission. So get your equipment together and head out, good luck. You should know that I have the utmost faith in your abilities. Raise that place to the ground and we'll see about heading out again right afterwards. We really have to keep up the pressure and we'll once again have to be patient while our warriors are out on their mission. Shouldn't take too, too long. You may have noticed that there are a couple of normal dwarves here in the fortress now, and that's because we've had a ton of new migrant waves lately. It's really good to see, honestly. I wonder if word of our fortress is spreading across the land now. More and more dwarves want to come and aid our cause. They know we're a fortress of vampires, and maybe they're seeking to preserve the dwarven nation as well, by changing out of their weak dwarven bodies and into powerful Nazu Sheb. Well, kudos to them. Yes, it's a big change, you dwarves. But it's for the good of everyone, really. Those goblins have to be stopped, and we are the only ones capable of doing so. Ah, excellent. The Helmdottoms and others have returned. Let's check that report. All right, they head up past the goblin capital and enter Hellvice. And it looks like Saxel was able to outmatch the goblins. Right off the bat, fantastic. And then the combat begins, and it looks like the dwarves have a serious advantage. Beautiful. Gonna take a look through here and see if there's anything interesting. Mm, nothing too, too cool. Yeah, just a bunch of dead goblins. And then after we destroyed the goblins, we looted the place and then rampaged through Hellvice. The infected seducer fled. That's the name of the group of refugee goblins. And then we destroyed Hellvice. Beautiful work. Now let's check that spoils report. Yeah, as I expected, a bunch of nothing, pretty much. <laughs> There are a bunch more weapons here, which I will be trying to get into more weapon traps for our hallway, just for the hell of it. But other than that, eh, nothing too, too interesting. Oh well. 
And now then, dwarves, I could see you're already all settled in, but I think we should head out once more, what do you say? Gotta keep their pressure up. Yeah, it would be for the best. Let's do it. Only this time, I'm thinking we take on the elves once more. The elves allied with the torment of witches, that is. And, well, actually, it would appear that all the remaining forest retreats controlled by the goblins have a fairly substantial population. Well, I mean, compared to the places we've been taking on anyways. Like up here in the north we have Kiss Wasp, and that has a population of about 100. And, mm, you know, I'm not too sure. Ooh, down here actually. The Dark Goblin Pits of Ruthless Defense. It's actually right next to Hellvice. There's about 50 goblins here, and that would be a little bit more manageable, I think. Although, it is still more of a challenge than that last place. But, mm, what the hell, let's do it. We will raid this site with 110 dwarves, and we'll attempt to raise it as well. Off with you warriors, good luck. Although I'm sure once again you won't need it. You know, I really do love this. Seeing all the dwarves assembling, grabbing their gear and heading out. Just fantastic. And while the warriors are away, I suppose we could take a look at some of our ongoing projects. Like down here, the windmill tower. Now we have been getting some real work done on this thing. I am sick of waiting on this project. We have to get it done. And so if we have a look upwards now, it stretches up to this level where we can see a bunch of axles and gear assemblies. And then up from there, we have our windmills. And then up to the north here, we have even more gear assemblies. And then up from there, even more windmills. And I do intend on having yet another layer of gear assemblies and windmills. I hadn't realized it, but apparently you can't build anything over top windmills or else they don't function, which is a huge problem. But we solved it, not a problem anymore. And if you have a look, the entirety of the windmill tower and all the pump stacks in the actual waterfall, well, they require a total of 244 power and we are now producing 1,120, although the pump stack down to the magma still is not hooked up yet. And that thing requires 1,293 power by itself. And so I'm not too sure if that last group of windmills is going to cut it exactly. But if it doesn't, then we'll just throw some more on somewhere. We'll get it sorted. No worries. And let's see, we're still waiting for those squads to get back. So let's have a look at what else we've done. Well, if you have looked down here in the meeting hall, I decided to throw a trade depot just right in the middle of the place. Just because we haven't really been doing much trading anyways. And the dwarves really like a nice, well-made trade depot. So I figured, what the hell, we'll just throw it in there. Kind of like a display item, you know? The wagons won't be able to make it down here, but the merchants and their pack animals will, and that's good enough. Also, I threw a slab in here, a floodgate. Kind of boring, but still, it's something the dwarves can appreciate. Well, would you look at that? The helmed autumns and others have returned fantastic. Let's have a look. Mission report. All right, they head up to the north. Saxel led the attack and easily outmatched those goblins once more. Fantastic. And then combat begins, and the goblins begin to fall immediately. Ooh, that is good. Oh man, would you look at that? We killed a bunch of those bastards, rampaged through the place, stole some garbage and livestock, cool, kicked the rest of the bastards out of the place, and then destroyed Ruthless Defense. Fantastic! Oh, and the spoils report, let's have a look. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A bunch of junk and some beak dogs. Just wonderful. You know, you gotta love them beak dogs. We've had those dozens upon dozens of beak dogs crammed down in this little underground pit here for a while, and, well, I gotta be frank with you guys, we needed some leather. <laughs> please don't be upset with me, please. As it turns out, beak dogs are prolific egg layers, and we've already seen several new broods of beak dog hatchlings. Like, almost way, way, way too many of them, actually. <laughs> On top of that, we still have all of our dogs and our pigs and our war boars. It's a damn mess of animals down here. And so yeah, just as a side project, we've been butchering a lot of these animals and uh, tanning their hides. And now many of our warriors are sporting nice beak dog cloaks and coats, as well as their armor. A little added protection from both goblins and the elements. And damn it, I gotta tell you, they look stylish as hell as well. And come on, you have to agree. Oh jeez. Stackhud, one of our bloodletters, has entered a strange mood. And this one is a little bit different than usual. It says they've begun to stalk and brood, mostly due to the fact that she's been in a bit of a stressful mood lately. Now, I'm not too sure what she grabbed right there, but it looked like she went down to our refuse pile down in the mines and came back with something nasty. Okay, so she has some beak dog bone here in her tanner's workshop. Go figure, more beak dog products. Let's wait up a second here and see what she comes out with. Okay, here we are. Stackhood Lasganalath, the bloodletter, has created Kokebvaknad Adilvukar, a beak dog bone pick, 
She claims it as a family heirloom. That's a strange one right there. Let's have a look. Its name translates to Dweller Strangled the Walled Urn. All right. And it's worth 7,000. Basically nothing. <laughs> wow, that is simple. This is a beak dog bone pick. All craft dwarf ships of the highest quality. On the item is an image of rectangular cabochons in beak dog bone. And that will do it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so simple, but still very cool. Beak dog bone. Gotta love it. All right, dwarves. I can see we're already back to work. Now we have already destroyed two more goblin settlements this episode, which is just excellent. And I'm thinking we should head out once more. Well, excuse the hell out of me. The enemy have come and are laying siege to the fortress. <laughs> wow, what the hell? Okay, now that's a little bit different than usual, because this is not a vile force of darkness, no. This here, my friends, is a siege brought on by the humans. The Confederation of Singing, that's what they're called. Who up to this point have been our only allies in this world? I gotta say, I'm a little shocked. And enraged, I guess, too. What the hell? Humans? I don't know why they would be attacking us. Doesn't really make any sense. Well, I mean, I guess they did lose a couple of uh, diplomats here. And of course, we are a fortress filled with blood-drinking monsters who have begun sending out large armies to wage war against the goblins. Maybe the humans are scared, and they're trying to take us out before we become a real problem. All right, well, having a look at their attack force, it doesn't look like they're trying very hard. Yeah, they have a, a recruit, an axe man, two more recruits, a lasher, and a water buffalo cow. <laughs> Why? A water buffalo cow? Okay. Dwarves, I don't even know what to tell you right now. I would love to head out and just crush these humans into the ground. But let's just be smart here. No sense in being brash, right? We'll just turn on the Autumn Festival, bro, and let those idiot humans get killed in our trap hall. A simple solution. And let's watch the humans move in. Hmm. Yeah, this is a extremely pitiful siege. What the hell? There's like nothing. Ridiculous. I don't know, humans, this is a very brash hand to be playing, especially when it's so weak. I'm thinking they're going to end up regretting this. Dearly. Oh, jeez, um, having a look over here, it looks like one of the humans is entering the fortress at this point, and there are still dwarves trying to make their way down. This one human charged out in front of the whole army. Army. <laughs> Small group, I mean. But it looks like that dwarf got to safety, thankfully. And then over here at the back entrance, mm, a couple dwarves making their way in still. But it looks like they're safe. Alright, come on in guys, let's go, hurry up. There we go. Now we just have to get somebody to pull the Sally Port lever. Oh, but the human is coming right down here. Ooh, that's not good, that's not good at all. Hold up here. Alright, well, I don't like the idea of killing this human because this gate is hopefully going to close in a second. But, <laughs> it's not like we have any options, so let's do it up. Alright, the human is fighting with a couple of dwarves here. And getting absolutely pounded. Can't say I'm surprised. All right, it looks like a deed is done. Fantastic. Uh, a lot of dwarves are panicking. Okay, yeah, a bit surprised, I'm sure. Couldn't blame them. But let's uh, let's compose ourselves and get off that gate. Come on, out of the way, dwarves. All right, I just canceled that lever pull. It's not going to be pulled anymore. But you guys have to move so we can close the gate, please. All right, that took a little bit of a behind-the-scenes messing around, but it looks like we got all the dwarves off that bridge just as another one's heading down. What a pain. Is this what you want to do, humans? Is this really what you want to do? Think about it. Guess we'll send the squads out to kill us one more human here. Let's do it, dwarves. <laughs> you coward. Really? That's ridiculous. Oh man, this is turning into a real cluster. Alright, it's not looking like we have much of a choice now. The dwarves don't seem to know what the hell's going on anymore. We have dwarves panicking, we have dwarves running all over the place. We're not going to be able to close that bridge safely, that's for sure. Although that being said, it looks like somebody did pull that lever and that bridge is now closed. Locking out a few of our dwarves. All warriors, thankfully. But still, not terribly sure I like their odds. There's only about seven dwarves out here. And you may also notice too that the uh, trained war water buffalo is down in this tunnel with them now. Which isn't as goofy as it sounds, because a water buffalo is a large and powerful creature. And if it's trained to fight us, then... Well, these dwarves might very well be in a bit of trouble. But yeah, out of options, I guess. We're just gonna have to attack the thing and hope these dwarves get out of here. It should also be noted too that one of the dwarves that is in here is Cole Ukerkal. 
a longtime fortress resident and the one who made our steel battle axe artifact Odan Vilseg, with which he is equipped. Just as a side note, one of my favorites right there. Alright, we're taking things slowly here and I'm following the water buffalo cow, which is so freaking silly. Alright, uh, I'm seeing some blood already. Oh boy, yeah. The water buffalo kicked one of our warriors in the head and tore apart his spine. Their fighting days are over, that's for sure. Still keeping at it and the water buffalo has died fantastic. Killed by Cole Ukrakal in a brutal swing of Odamthil Seg. Hacked that cow right in the upper body and tore its spine apart. Wonderful. But now things are going to get really deadly, I think. The hallway dwarves are going up to the surface now, and that one dwarf who was kicked in the head is panicking running through the swamp now. Can't really blame him, I suppose. And then the humans over here are still moving in, including the swordsmen, the axemen, and the lasher. Those are the dangerous ones. There are also two recruits here, but I'm not too concerned about them. And I did give the order for all of our warriors to come out and start fighting these humans. But of course, the hallway group is going to be the first to combat. Just really hoping they could uh, pull through here. There are only five dwarves, and the humans are very well equipped. Alright, taking out a recruit first. Not going to be a big deal there, I don't think. And it wasn't really, but it looks like it kind of shocked a couple of our dwarves here. And now they are panicking, which is terrible. Mostly because that human lasher is now moving in. Uh, okay, uh, combat has begun, a dwarf has been wounded. Not a terrible hit though. Still going here, come on, make a decisive hit somebody please. Yeah, that lasher's hanging in there. And those other humans are moving right in. Ooh, this is looking like it's gonna be ugly. Oh, but maybe not, looks like Cole has that human down now, and is hacking away. He's also the one who put that human recruit down. That is some fantastic work there, Cole. Still taking things slowly, the other humans are... Mm, not really moving in. They're being very slow about it, which is excellent. Certainly not complaining about that. Over here in the crossroads, it looks like a couple of dwarves are taking on that recruit now. Oh, and also note that a lot of our other warriors are coming up through the entry hall now, which will make things a lot easier. All right, here we are coming down to it. Ooh, accidentally unpaused it, but uh, well, let's just see how this plays out. The dwarves are swarming the remaining three humans. Um, uh, kind of hard to tell what's going on. That one swordsman is a uh, ripped to shreds, completely dead now. <laughs> Two of them, and it's just the Axemen left, who is enraged and fighting and dead. Okay, that works, that works. Gonna take a quick look at the combat logs here to see if anything bad came out of that. Looks like Idy Ristvath Sith made it to the combat. Killed one of the humans by stabbing them in the head with his spear, his signature move. Oh, and actually it looks like he managed to kill two of the humans. Man, that guy's a beast. And the other swordsman was killed by Cole, with Odom Thilseg, who chopped his head straight off. Oh man, you guys are pros. That is some excellent fighting right there. Very proud. Not to say that combat didn't take its toll on our dwarves, however. It looks like quite a few of them are panicked about this situation. Couldn't really blame them, I suppose. We've never been attacked by the humans before, and this is all a big surprise. Yes, yeah, very shocking. Yeah, in fact, if we take a look at the list of civilizations here, it says the Confederation of Singing is now at war with us. Those rat bastards. Now, why the hell would they do something so stupid? I could see no point. Goddamn foolish. Hmm. Just out of extreme curiosity, I'm taking a look in Legends mode here, just to see if we can figure out why those humans attacked us. And, well, it does look like they've declared all-out war on us dwarves, in a conflict known as Mogas Tashro, the Eviscerated War. It says here the causes of the conflict are debated by scholars and very little is truly known. So, yeah, there's no real reason for it, and the humans are being complete fools about this. Ridiculous. Well, if the Confederation of Singing wants war, then... Well, <laughs> we might actually have bigger fish to fry. Not too concerned about them for the time being. In fact, speaking of these <laughs> other fish to fry, down here in the asylum we have, you can see, a dwarf. Over here, locked in their little room. And well, while that fighting was going on, I was kind of dealing with this in the background. Now, this dwarf has been stricken with a fell mood. His name is Ushrir, and he has a horrible fell look. Now, originally, when that dwarf had a strange mood earlier in the episode, I thought it was a fell mood, but it wasn't. A fell mood is much different, much more sinister. It can only happen when a dwarf is in a truly terrible mood, like Ushria here. And when it does happen, they go and claim a workshop, just like a normal strange mood dwarf, but then they wander around seeking out a dwarf to kill, and then they use that dwarf's bones in their artifact, which is a tad ghoulish, yes. 
Now, if you take a gander down this way here, you can see that I made a little enclosure around his stalagmite. And in this enclosure, I put a bunch of workshops because I don't know what he's going to want exactly. And I also put a little door up there as well. And so I'm hoping that with this door locked and this whole thing enclosed, he'll come down here, claim a workshop, and then I can allow this berserk dwarf in the room beneath him out and then maybe he'll kill this dwarf? I don't know if a berserk dwarf counts as a normal dwarf, but I figure what the hell. It's a neat little experiment. All right, the room is unlocked, and Ushrir is heading down and has claimed a tanner's shop. Interesting. And now they appear to be just kind of wandering around the area, trying to seek out a dwarf whose bones or skin they want to take. <laughs> And so now we're gonna unlock this Berserk Dwarf's door and see what happens. That door is unlocked and... Okay, okay, all right, all right. Got some movement here, movement. Oh, oh, they... Uh, the the Felmu Dwarf is just panicking at this point. The Berserk Dwarf is punching them, I think. Well, that's not helpful. Oh, oh no, okay. Um, it looks like they went up and over the wall. I guess I probably should have seen that coming. And it looks like Ushbeer is getting the absolute tar beaten out of them. Eh, it's a shame, I suppose. Oh, uh, but they did break away from the enraged dwarf and are now making their way through the caverns. Ah, I don't like much of this. Not at all. Yeah, and having a look up here at the berserk dwarf, they not doing so well, I don't think. But they are still crawling around. That's going to be a problem right there. And as for the Felmood Dwarf, they are down here, just kind of wandering around. Yeah, I don't care for this so much. If they encounter a dwarf, any dwarf, they will murder them, except, well, I guess not a Berserk Dwarf. Those dwarves don't count. Now, I guess I could just let this guy wander around until he encounters another dwarf, but that could be a bit dangerous, of course. But I don't really know how to get a crazy dwarf out to him. Like, I would really prefer if he encountered one of the Stark Raving Mad Dwarves or a Melancholic Dwarf. Which sounds sick of me, I, I suppose, but <laughs> I'm not too sure what else we could hope for. It would really stink if they went and killed a perfectly healthy vampire. Uh, like, okay, hear me out. If I make a burrow like this, and then we attempt to get all the dwarves into that burrow, like this, then, I mean, they're gonna start heading down to this general area. All of the dwarves, including the very insane ones. Okay, now we'll just give it a second here. Alright, that'll do it, I think. The vast majority of our vampires are down here in the quartzite layer now, including some irreversibly insane dwarves. And now we're going to turn off the burrow, and I'm hoping all the normies will head back up to the fortress or find something to do, while the crazy ones stay down here. Yeah, I think that has a high probability of working. And I'm going to try to lock up this door here as soon as people stop going through it. Okay, there we go. And now let's see what happens. The Felmood Dwarf is still wandering around a bit, and it does look like there are some crazies heading this way. And there we go. Fantastic. I mean, well, not for the Insane Dwarf, of course, but you know what I mean. Oh, man, this is pretty gruesome, huh? It looks like our Felmood Dwarf is now hauling the carcass back to their workshop, where they're going to make some sort of a ghastly trinket, I'm sure. I want to be excited. I really do. <laughs> It's interesting, if nothing else. And there we go, Ushbir has begun a mysterious construction. Now we'll just give him a second and see what comes of this. Nothing good, I'm sure. Ah, here we go. Ushbir Kedbamrek, one of the crazed vampires, has created Zagith Desrem el Kur Oshnil, a menacing dwarf bone spike. He claims it as a family heirloom. A spike, huh? That's interesting. It does seem odd that he made the thing out of Tanner's workshop. But, eh, oh well, let's have a look. Its name translates to Devil Slowed, the Plague of Betrayal. Wow. And it's worth about 9,000. Eh, not so much. This is a menacing dwarf bone spike. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with dwarf bone. Yes, a very simple artifact indeed. Constructed of dwarf bone and decorated with dwarf bone. Yikes, huh? Unfortunately, dwarf bone isn't really the strongest material and it wouldn't make a great trap. But, uh, I don't know, maybe we could do something with this. Positively ghoulish. Well, what, what the hell? I was gonna say, Ushwir, you could stay down here for now. But the bastard just jumped straight out of their pen. You damn troublemaker. Eh, whatever. We'll take care of you later. Because now we have to start wrapping up this episode. Really kind of pushing it, honestly. An exciting episode to be sure. We managed to take a couple more of those goblin settlements. 
always good. We're now at war with the humans, which is not fantastic, but really overall, I'm not too concerned about them. And in fact, my bearded bastards, I'm not even too concerned about raiding at the time being. Because you see, I've been a busy dwarf. And I have a secret for you, as well as a cliffhanger. Having a look over here, you can see our windmill tower is completed. 100%. This being the case, my dwarves, the time has come for the magma fall. Hello you bearded bastards, we're here at the end of the episode once more to check out some more fan artwork, so buckle yourselves in and let's have a look. Now then, the first piece of the day is entitled Precision Tactics, done by Aiden Hust. And we can see here a fantastical rendition of Atir, Bemble, Id, and Saxel in what appears to be a scene of them hiring on an assassin. Very cool, isn't it? Now, this piece here was done a couple episodes ago when we were thinking we might hire on some sort of a assassin sort of a figure to head out and attack those goblin pits, but we never actually ended up doing that. But I kind of regret it now seeing this picture. Isn't this cool? Having a look in the background here, you can see the Tower of Memories, just kind of a silhouetted against the moonlight. And then over to the side, you can see the Windmill Tower, a work in progress. And it's all kind of shrouded in this nighttime mist here. Very cool. Yeah, I really am a big fan of this scene, dude. Great work. Oh, and does Atir have a hook for a hand? I just realized that. That is pretty cool. <laughs> hmm, makes you think, doesn't it? Anywho, a great piece of artwork. Now then, moving on, our second piece of the day is entitled That Darned Ludasum, done by Carl Carlson. And would you have a look at this thing? We can see here Ludasum, the feathered mongoose that attacked us a couple episodes ago. And isn't that fun? Such a neat and clean style. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Got all that web stuck all over this rock that it's perched atop as it kind of leers menacingly at the viewer, with all that dribble comes splattering out of its mouth. Yeah, that is truly badass. You really managed to capture the fierce beauty of this creature. You know, I would really love to see this thing as a sticker. I think that'd be pretty neat, huh? Hmm, might have to put some thought into that. But I digress. Beautiful work here, Carl. Thank you so much. And you too as well, Aiden. And all of you out there as well for watching. You guys really are the best. And, you know, honestly speaking here for a second. Just gonna pull away the whole Krug Smash facade. And, you know, guys, I gotta tell you. You're the best, all of you. You know, I see how excited you guys get every Thursday when these episodes come out, and that is great to see, but <laughs> it really could not measure up to how excited I get to respond. Truly, too, like, actually. It brightens my day, and I wish I could respond more, honestly. But damn it, it just takes so much time. Just know that I appreciate your comments more than anything, you bearded bastards. You guys are the best. Once more, I thank you for watching. And I certainly hope to see you next time, here in Stetargus, gosh, Honeystoker. And until then, my bearded bastards, 